Hej. 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 Huve. Sveikas. Labas. Vakar. Zdravstvujte. Hello. Uh, my name is, as has already been announced, Morten Trovik. And um, it, it's, there's no hiding anymore that I'm Norwegian, at least. Uh, and I'm also, on my name card, it says artist and director, for lack of better expressions, I would say. Um, I have also many other names, like other figures in religion and history. I've also been called, uh, to name a few, um, useful idiot for the worst, most evil regime, uh, male chauvinist, uh, cultural imperialist, um, to name a few, and Norwegian, of course. Uh, there are those who wish I wasn't Norwegian in Norway. We will get back to that. I have to say thank you to, uh, the, to Mark, to the ICD, and also to the Nordic Council of Ministers. It's, uh, it's, I'm really honored to speak in such a distinguished forum and to so distinguished, well-dressed, beautiful, cultivated participants as yourself. Um, I will start off, the former speaker ended by a quote. I will start <coughs> with one. As we today, uh, today and this year, we are, uh, I wouldn't exactly say celebrating, but there has been a lot of marking and notifying uh, the public about the 100-year centenary of this outbreak of the First World War in 1914. And naturally, this was long before the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy was established. That goes without saying. If we have only been there, Oh, that wasn't really funny, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have to adjust my jokes here a little bit. Uh, anyway, the, the, quotes, the quote is from Georges Clemenceau, the, also known as the Tiger, the uh, French Prime Minister who was leading France through, through the First World War. And one of his most famous quotes is that politics, sorry, get ahead of myself there. War is far too serious a matter to leave to the generals which is, of course, entirely true. And I will paraphrase Clemenceau and say that politics is far too important a matter to leave only to the politicians. As well as diplomacy is far too important a matter to leave to the di diplomats. And I have to be self-reflective, after all, and show a certain bit of humility and say that art, God damn it, is far too important to leave to the artists only. <laughs> and that is why we are here together, isn't it? to try to define strategies, and not least try to define what cultural diplomacy actually is, I think is a, a key question that should concern us in the, in the days to come. Uh, I will speak a little bit about some of my projects for which there, isn't really, there aren't really that many names, uh, apart from what I've already introduced. Um, because I work in a field that takes its starting point in theater. As Shakespeare said, the world is a stage and the, all men and women merely are players. And each one plays his part. As I'm playing mine now and as you are playing yours in your daily life. Every day, all the time. And if you think that this speech is going to consist of mainly of borrowed quotes, you're entirely right, because in 10 minutes you have to be quick and uh, have good sound bites, is my philosophy. I will also show some practical examples of some of the projects I have been making. And towards the end, I will be giving you, in the keeping of the theme, the cool north, I will be giving you all uh, the, uh, the cultural diplomatic equivalent of an ice bucket challenge. So uh, stay mm -hmm. tuned. Uh, I think we will start with the picture. We have to improvise a little bit technologically. I hope you will bear with me. If we start with the picture that says Tumblr something. 
It's like a long title on it, it says Tumblr. Uh, okay, try that one. Yeah, this is from an installation that I made in 2010 when I was uh, Norway's so far first and probably also last artist in residence with the Norwegian Armed Forces. Uh, my um, assignment was to reflect on military issues, uh, issues connected to defense and uh, uh, conflicts, and to make uh, artworks that in one way or the other reflected upon this. So this is one of the, those uh, projects. It's called, uh, pretty self-explanatorily, Yes, No. Uh, and consists of two white-painted Swedish uh, tanks that uh, I, through a lot of applied cultural diplomacy, managed to borrow from our friendly neighbor Sweden because the Norwegian army didn't want to borrow it to me. So uh, in addition to those two 50-ton heavy tanks uh, standing beside the, our national opera in Oslo uh, for, for six weeks, we also had an element of a Swedish intervention, you could say, into Norway. I will then proceed to the film clip as an example of trying to define cultural diplomacy, that cultural diplomacy is not necessarily, of course, conducted between states or nation states. Cultural diplomacy is, as several of the previous speakers have underlined, a people-to-people -people exercise or a person-to-person -person exercise, which is at the bottom of it all. So I'll start off with Miss Landmine. Uh, this movie is also available on YouTube. If you uh, uh, search Miss Landmine, you have the whole documentary in its entirety. It's, uh, I would say it's watchable. Um, then I will move on uh, quite soon to the next example. Uh, I just uh, would like to touch upon um, the kind of working title for my address to you here today, which was, the heading was Arts versus Politics. Because, and it might just as well be called Culture versus Diplomacy. I actually was a little bit sad that I, you know, I came to think of that so late, but let's, let's have that as an alternative title. Culture versus Diplomacy. Because culture and diplomacy, as we all know, don't always mix that well. They might even be directly opposed to each other. So how, how do you work with cultural diplomacy as a tool? And I can only speak, of course, from my own experience. But I think one challenge, this is not the ice bucket challenge, that comes later, but one challenge that you constantly have to deal with is actually believing that you can learn something from your enemies. I think this is, a, this is a great challenge that many of us, myself included, are not taking seriously enough. Too often, all, all types of diplomacy, that be cultural or other forms, more tradi traditional forms, is about kind of secretly, on the sly, convincing the other part to think like you. Which is good and well, but that is, not a, that is in my book at least, not real diplomacy or real cultural, ex cultural exchange. If, you, if real cultural exchange, if real dialogue is what you want, then you have to be prepared to learn from people you don't like. And I know that this sounds banal, but, and it is, but it is, that's the way it is. Uh, and now for the ice bucket challenge, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as an example, of a country that most of us don't like that well, I give you. We go to the world's most and longest performing theater production. So we will play our roles in it. Det är 
Nyhetspartiet hevder norske kunstnere er nyttige idioter for Nordkorea. Er det en nyttig idiot for Nordkorea? Ikke nyttig, men ikke en idiot. Selvfølgelig handler ikke dette bare om Nordkorea. Det handler om vår såkalte toleranse, som egentlig bare er toleranse for folk som er som oss selv. And we might as well jump to the picture that's called um, DMZ, the one. Yeah, there you have it. Uh, I came back from, from one of my trips to North Korea one and a half week ago. Um, and one of the things that I have in the pipeline is something called the DMZ Academy. Uh, the DMZ is, as many of you may know, uh, abbreviation for a demilitarized zone. And it is mostly or most closely connected with the zone that splits the Korean Peninsula in two opposing states. Um, let me just explain a little bit about the, f the clip you just saw. That was a Norwegian documentary of Norwegian state broadcasters who I took into North Korea on May 17th the Norwegian national holiday in 2012. Uh, and they made a documentary on what I labeled the first Norwegian festspiele, the first Norwegian uh, cultural festival in North Korea. And we presented a program of unashamedly nationalistic and self-congratulatory Norwegian uh, hardcore nationalism uh, in the heart of North Korea for one week, including music, uh, theater, uh, visual arts, not the least, and visual arts that's been quite controversial in the outside world. I see that the moderator is now getting impatient, so here's the ice bucket challenge. If you really want to test your own uh, limits of tolerance and to try something new, something fresh, deal with somebody you don't like to start with. Come with me and start the, D the DMZ Academy in North Korea. I have already had the approval of the North Korean cultural authorities. Um, I need your beauty, your strength, and at least your money to do it. So we will take applications um, outside afterwards. Uh, you can also read more about this if you Google it. It's been quite much in the media for the last few days. Anyway, thank you. <laughs>